Hi, welcome back to Engine Shop Joe. And today we're going to be looking at a QSL9 that's logging uh, crankcase pressure faults and they changed the crankcase filter. And it will be okay for a couple weeks and then the problem starts again. And it's in a uh, service truck that runs up and down the highway. So let's take a look and see how you can figure out what the problem is, where the problem is, without taking the engine apart. Or at least give you a clue of what you need to start taking apart instead of just jumping into it and then there's a problem. So here we go. So whenever someone calls me with a problem, the first thing I always like to do is get an ECM image and then I take a look at the fault codes, the engine protection, sometimes trip data, in this case, they were telling me the red, the amber and red light were coming on. So when I got this, I saw that the, the red light was coming on for coolant temperature. As recent as, look to the far right where our first and last timestamp is. And the, the last time this fault happened before they hooked up to this and got the image with insight, it was 30 hours ago. So 30 hours ago, this had coolant temperature in the most severe range. We'll see what that was when we get to engine protection. Now, engine protection faults are faults that can cause faults that that system, if it's out of range, can cause damage to the engine. Some examples of engine protection faults are uh, crankcase pressure and EGR over temperature, intake manifold over temperature oil temperature, oil pressure, and of course, coolant temperature. On some of the big engines, the high horsepower, coolant pressure is also monitored. And if that drops down too low, it can, uh, it can affect, it. it can log an engine protection. But in our heavy duty engines, we won't see coolant pressure as of uh, 2023. So uh, this is your fault screen. And the reason they have engine protection and not just the fault screen is I can go and erase all these faults out of here and take it someplace and they'll never know the faults were there. But I can't erase engine protection. So let's take a look next at engine protection. Now engine protection is sort of like the fault screen. On the far right, you'll have just the time since the last time the fault was active. But they also show you the fault code on the, on, in the center there. And I've got a red block around the value and you can see the coolant temperature most severe level, it got up to 242.7 degrees 30 hours ago, and it was up as far as 243. So this is why you always go to engine protection to see what's going on. Also in the engine protection, you saw there was some a logging of the crankcase pressure. So I'd like you to pause the video here and stop and think about what you would do if someone called you and said, what should I do? I've got these faults. You've just seen what I saw. What would you tell them to do? Take a minute and then flip the video back on and I'll let you know what I did. So of course, depending on who you're dealing with, you might be uh, dealing with a, uh, a novice mechanic and someone that just started and you would tell them, hey, check the vent tube, see if a wasp build a nest in it, take it off, blow through it. That's the uh, tube coming off the crankcase filter that would go back to the actual atmosphere vent. Check that, make sure that's all open. Check the crankcase filter. Check the crankcase filter housing, make sure there's no cracks, nothing's down in there plugging it up. Put another crankcase filter in it, take it for road test just to be safe and make sure it's okay. So you get the idea with that. But if you know that who you're talking to is very competent and has been around the block a few times, then it's time to do a little more advanced troubleshooting. So that's where we were. So what I told them to do is uh, I know that you can cut the cylinders out on the engine. And I told them to take the vehicle and either find a, um, a stretch of parking lot or a job site where there's nobody at where you can do some hard acceleration and maybe get up to 30 miles an hour and then stop. And I had them cut out, number one, 
do a full throttle takeoff and rev up and then come back, shut off number two, turn number one back on and do that till all six cylinders were cut out and I had them repeat the process. So I said pick a starting point, line your bumper up with something and then do your blast down the uh, down down the, the field or the job site or whatever and then stop in the same place so everything is as uniform as possible data log all parameters and send that to me so they did that and then this is what I got and this is what we saw now first let me say this is not what the graph looks like or this is actually an Excel spreadsheet from the data log this isn't what it looks like when you open it up um, this is after I arrange everything and sort it out. So uh, this is what I sent back to the to the shop that sent me the request for help so that they can make sense of it. So if you look, uh, I had them shut off cylinder one, two, three, four, five, and six and and floor it. And so we got with number five shut off, we never went over 3.5. With the other cylinder shut off, we had higher crankcase pressure. Now, unfortunately, the test wasn't exactly uniform. There were some places where they didn't get a good log. I think he got on the, off the freeway and did this by slowing down and speeding up. And so there was a couple places where he didn't actually mass, match the same boost. But overall, when he shut number five off, and by the way, I had him do this three three different series of these. When he shut five off, the crankcase pressure always dropped down to almost normal. Now, because I'm not there, I want to make sure that he is uh, being fairly consistent in the amount of power being applied uh, to the ground when he's doing each one of these cutout cylinders. So what I did is I... I logged crankcase pressure, exhaust gas pressure, intake manifold pressure, and fuel rail pressure on each cylinder. So you can see that on the left it's cylinder three cut out, cylinder four cut out. And then when cylinder five's cut out, we see again the crankcase pressure drops way down. And then when cylinder six is cut out, you can see that uh, at the very beginning he got up to 12 inches of blow by but it dropped way down why because if you look at the boost he was letting his foot off and kind of coasting so we weren't making horsepower so I call this the validation where I look at all these numbers and go okay I'm I'm satisfied enough that we're in the, we're staying on the ball field when we do each one of these cutouts and I can trust the results so that's what this portion of it was this slide that you're looking at I simply graphed all the crankcase pressures from the logs when he cut out all the cylinders. And you can see the green line never got over about 3.5. On the left, you've got two all the way to 16 inches of uh, crankcase pressure. And our normal running range is 2 to 10 with a clean filter. And when you get above 10 and you're consistently above 10 or higher, there's probably a problem going on. So in this case, when we cut out number five, which was represented by the green line, the green line when five was off, that's crankcase pressure stayed low all the time. When all the other cylinders were cut out, we had high crankcase pressure here or there because five was turned on. We pulled the head off. Five was the worst cylinder. We did have a couple other cylinders that were scuffed and so we ended up having to put kits in it to fix it. But the reason we did this is the turbocharger could have been the problem and in the application it's in it's very difficult to isolate the turbo. You really got to buy another one and put it on. So that's a $4,000 error if it doesn't fix it. So when we cut the cylinders out it doesn't affect the turbo at all if the turbo is the problem. Thanks for joining me on Engine Shop Joe. See you next time.